en jij op zoek naar een mooie foto cadeau. Bij Picture Moment zetten we je mooiste foto op een mok, kussen, glas, canvas of op een andere luxe wanddecoratie. Textiel bedrukken, borduren met naam en logo binnen 1 uur klaar. Officiële pasfoto's, foto's en posters printen vanuit je mobiel, USB, zijn direct klaar. Kom langs op het winkelcentrum Zijplein of kijk op picturemoments.nl Surinaamse muziek. U hoort ze allemaal bij ons. Hit Radio. Oneindig goede muziek. Notariskantoor Lond en Lalma Holmet voor al uw notariële zaken in Nederland. Denk aan de aan- en verkoop van uw huis, hypotheekakte, oprichten van bv's, stichtingen en verenigingen en al uw familierechtszaken, zoals testamenten, huwelijkse voorwaarden en boedels. Wij bieden echter meer. U hoeft niet naar Suriname om uw notariële zaken daar te regelen. Wij zorgen voor de begeleiding omdat wij kennis van zaken en contacten hebben met notarissen in Suriname. Daardoor bespaart u hoge kosten. Wij houden de contacten laagdrempelig en de communicatie helder. De klant is bij ons koning en kwaliteit is een topprioriteit. Neem contact met ons op of kijk op onze website.
My name is Mahesh Joshi. I'm Gujarati. My forefathers are from Porbandar. They left Porbandar in the 1960s and they went to East Africa to do business. Our business was Indian textiles and we started City Silks in Africa. But due to the economical problems of Idi Amin, we had British passports and Uganda was a British colony. So we left to restart our business in England. In 1969, we opened our first shop in Leicester in England. Uh, my aunt was living here in Holland. She got married to the, one of the East Africans who left in 1972 with the E.D. Amin problems. And uh, after living here in Holland, she told us that there are so many Hindustani Suriname people living in Holland from Suriname. So due to that point, the cultural point of view, we decided to do exhibitions in 1990 under the name of City Silks throughout the whole of Holland. And after doing the exhibitions for five years, we decided to open the first City Silks branch in Paul Krugelan, The Hague, as Den Haag has the highest concentration of Hindustani people in Holland. And from that, we went to Rotterdam and then Amsterdam. City Silks opened in Holland, specialized for the Hindustani community. But in the recent years, we've had a great interest from Dutch people, the Moroccan people, and also the Turkish people. All the cultures have great interest in the Indian clothing lines that we do due to the fact of Bollywood. And with that interest, every year, the cultural experience has been increasing in all the different cultures and that is something very very interesting we created in the year 2003 netherland india chamber of commerce and trade and i became the first executive president of this organization the objective of nicct is to promote business and economic relations between the two countries. The mission of this organization is to inform, to inspire, and to influence all the stakeholders who are involved in Netherlands-India business relationship. The biggest strength of India today is its large growing market. We've had consistently high rates of growth. It's been a little low in the last couple of years, but if you take a period of the last 10 years, it's been 8 to 10 percent rate of growth, and it's going to go back to that uh, levels. So we are providing a large market demand, high rate of growth. We also have um, a large pool of technical manpower. Uh, we have a large pool of uh, knowledge workers. We have a very young population and I think um, these are things which India has to offer but in, in India's own developmental programs, you know, our infrastructure development, our development of ports, road, uh, road networks, housing, uh, uh, urban planning, developed countries like the Netherlands have a great opportunity to invest in India and to, and to partner India in this effort. I have to sell the Netherlands in India, but I have to sell also India and the Netherlands. What NICCT does with all its activities, also this gathering today, there were 150 companies here. And we could put together, because of your activity, because of NICCT, India on the radar screen of all these companies. And that is important. 
because Dutch small medium sized uh, enterprises, small and medium sized enterprises, they are now in the internal market. That's easier than going to India. They have the euro in Europe here. It's easier than working with another currency. Here we all know the European business culture. There is another culture in India. The difference is, in India, we will have double digits growth of the consumer market, and in Europe, one and a half, two percent at best. So, in order to find markets, we have to go to uh, India and to other countries outside Europe, so, but we have to put it on the radar screen of our small and medium-sized enterprises, and NICCT plays a very important role in that process. The companies which are hesitating to go into India must realize that future belongs to India. One-sixth of humanity lives in India. India will be growing for the next 15 years at the rate of 7%. So if they want a market, they need to go to India. That is where the business is going to be. Whether you like it or not, India is going to touch your life either as a consumer or as a worker or as a producer. This is no longer a matter of choice. It is a matter of learning early, going and learning. And by the time the market matures, you can be successful that way. I see a very bright future for the NICCT, but it, because it is in an area which is bound to grow further. Also, we had a very interesting visit to Kamenth, that's a municipality of Hague. I'm Sanyukta Lakhina. I have been living in this uh, country for more than 40 years. Uh, I came here just uh, seven days after we got married. Uh, I have been in, I'm economist by education. And uh, when I came, I was looking for something to do. And then I uh, started uh, boutiques. I was managing f nine boutiques in Netherlands, Belgium, and Germany for more than 30 years. And then I wanted to do something uh, for, this, yeah, for the community. So we started this Indian Ladies Club. And in this, this is uh, a platform for social networking. Uh, today we have AGM 2014. Uh, 2013 was a very good year for all ILC. We had 10 interesting uh, events, including cooking and serving twice for Rest of One Heart, that is charity activity for single mothers and children in Den Haag. In Holland, the idea is to, uh, you know, bridge the gap between cultures. And also, we try between the Hindustanis, Surinamis, I should say, and Indians. So, you know, we, we meet them, we discuss, and uh, we do a program together. For the army widows, we provided help by giving machines to them and so they could help themselves. And that was in Maharashtra. We have helped when there was a drought. Uh, that was in uh, Odisha. Uh, we built a school uh, with help of few others from Holland. Uh, a school, one in Maharashtra uh, and one in uh, Chennai. There are about more than 1,000 children are studying and uh, the name is India Netherlands School. This kind of uh, help, we have done it so far. I think in November or, or something like that, uh, 98, I went for coffee to PC Hofstrand <laughs> and, uh, and I heard someone saying, oh, there's a hotel for sale. So I immediately asked that waitress, I wait, which one? So this, uh, she gave me some details. So immediately from there, I went to the hotel. Ultimately, I made the deal and I bought the hotel. So that's how the hotel industry started.
Now this, you know, it's, life has been a challenging uh, uh, all through. It's not been so easy. After I set up the hotel, then in between, of course, I went into different business ventures. And, uh, but then I wanted to give something back to the society. I really wanted to uh, do something for the poor. I really wanted to uh, see people happy around me. So then I started more of social work. Now, social work was not easy. You know, if you have to go to India to start doing something, it's not easy. But then a friend of mine, he used to be a very famous actor those days. Uh, his wife died of cancer. His name is Sunil Dutt. So Sunil Dutt uh, said to me, he says, Harry, why don't you look after my foundation, the, the cancer foundation, Nargis Dutt Cancer Foundation for Benelux. So then I got involved in that. So step by step, we moved on and on. Ultimately, uh, one day, I had a big set, setback. And the setback was that I got cancer. Shocking news. I did not expect it. Overnight, everything was finished. I didn't know what to do. It is not easy when someone tells you, you are cancer. So I went to the doctor. He says, uh, you have a very rare cancer. When they diagnose this, you have a very rare cancer and you have to be operated immediately. So this happened around again four or five o'clock and next morning seven o'clock I was operated. I was told the last time this kind of case in Holland was traced in 1991. Anyway, then I went through my chemos and uh, the full treatment. So after the treatment, I had to decide what I need more in life. So first thing I decided that I'm going to step back from business. I didn't want any more tensions. I didn't want any more problems. I didn't want uh, um, uh, a life where my health would suffer. So then a new journey started. And now the new journey was that I wanted to do as much possible for the poor. I wanted to get involved much more into the um, charity work, into helping people. And uh, so then my wife said to me, uh, I said, look, as far as I'm concerned, so, very supportive of my wife, my boys, Rona Kamer, they understood it. So, she took over the business part of it then. relationship with Harry, I would say, um, I think he's my best friend. He is uh, very inspiring. Um, the best part is that nothing pulls him down. No matter where we were in the journey of our life, whatever issues we had, he, he, I could always depend on him and he's, he's, he was never down. Even during his illness, I think that was the most important factor. That is what uh, kept him going. He has had this very positive attitude. And I would, I would say that to all the uh, people who have any terminal illnesses or are suffer of any illness and everything, it's all about attitude. You know, he, he was very positive and be open, be willing to accept 
Um, if your friends are coming forward to help you, don't close yourself. Your friends will be around. They help you. In Harry's case, in my case, um, I think because of his personality, his positive attitude, he was never there sitting feeling sorry for himself. And with the grace of God, he's absolutely fine now, fully recovered. But that was a turning point in our life. The two projects which have been very close to the heart is one is the disaster management. I realized wherever there is a disaster, the family suffer a lot. People suffer a lot. They don't have a roof. They don't have anywhere to stay. So that struck me. Oh my God, I got to study this subject, disaster management. And when I studied this subject, disaster management, I identified, first answer is how to make cheap houses for the poor, for the people who are suffering, how to give them shelter. Part of my social work and my giving back to my country and especially for disaster areas is this is what I do. Here we are in Finnish Profiles and Finnish Profiles India is a joint venture with Finnish Profiles Holland. We can make a house of 30 square meters in less than four hours and when people see our contribution they are very surprised. My son Amir and nephew Ijoth look after this project in India. And when one of my trips to India, I realized there were floods and the villages were washed away with the floods, with water and all that. And that's how I got a new idea. Harry, you've got to adopt a village. You've got to start a new foundation. You've got to involve youngsters in this foundation. You've got to adopt. And that is what I'm busy with. Now this new, my foundation, the aim and objective of this foundation will be to build a village. Give everything what we have and the villagers don't have. Children should get a school in the village. People have to walk now for miles and miles and there's no dispensary. Hygienic conditions are awful. So now that is my planning. I'm going to educate these children. I'm going to educate those poor people. I'm going to educate those women of those villages. And can you imagine in about 15 to 20 years when all these youngsters will be adults? They will be the future, not only of that village, but for that country. I hope and I wish with the support of various organizations, I can really achieve this, God willing, we will do that. The future of the Indians outside India is bright for a very simple reason that Indians are able to integrate professionally very quickly into the society in which they are placed. So therefore, in professional terms, they are able to keep their own culture, their own identity, but at the same time, in terms of uh, uh, professional activities, business activities, they are able to integrate very easily with the host society and are able to make a very useful contribution to that society. Come on, honey. Hey, Aaron. <laughs> Well, my name is uh, Sid Sand. I was uh, only 15 years old when I went down to a university and then I studied in England and uh, finished also at a very, very young age. I was 19 uh, years old when I, uh, when I graduated. And when I was 19, I did not know what to do. You know, my father 
uh, used to be in uh, the textile business. You know, he grew up in the textile business. You know, so uh, for me, it was first important, what do I do? What shall I do? And I started off by saying, you know what? I would love to be in the textile business because my father did that in the past and we had some, I had some nostalgia on that, saying, oh, I'd love to be able to become really big, you know, in the textile industry. And uh, so I went to China and I started looking at different products. So not only the textile business, but also different products. And I was in Hong Kong at that time and I was at the CBS, the Central Bureau of Statistics. And in this company, they would tell you all statistics, you know, from products which, where they're going, so product, what kind of products categorized, you know, that are going from, for example, Hong Kong to the port of Rotterdam or to the port of Hamburg or to the port of Antwerp. And very, very well nicely categorized. You could really see the streams of different products that were going in and out from China. And I was really focused on China because I really felt that there was the market. So anyway, the guy that was helping me there, he asked me, he said, Sid, why are you only looking at the road from China to Europe? Why are you not looking at the road from uh, Europe to China? So why are you not looking at what you guys are exporting to us? And I said, look, well, look what, you know, as I come from Holland, we do cheese. Uh, you know, we, what else do we sell, you know, to you guys? You know, we're really... In, I don't think there's much that we can do, you know, so, but he was, he kept on looking, uh, looking further and further. And he said, you know, 87% of the Dutch exports at that time in volume was waste. So I said, oh, that's glamorous, you know, waste. Wow, garbage. You mean garbage? He said, yes, yeah, garbage. So I said, wow, that's, uh, that sounds really, really amazing, you know. But AGN Ayurveda Nederland. Met meer dan 30 jaar ervaring en begrip onder de deskundige leiding van de heer Anil Kumar Meta, de oudste Ayurvedische kliniek in Nederland. U kunt bij AGN terecht voor een vakkundig gezondheidsadvies en klassieke Ayurvedische behandelingen. Immers, een simpele tip kan voor u een wereld van verschil betekenen. Ons motto, leef bewust, weet wie u bent, wat u eet en geniet van het leven. Wilt u Ayurveda leren? Dat kan ook. Bij ons opleidingsinstituut IJsra kunt u diverse beroepsopleidingen volgen tot Ayurvedic Practitioner, Ayurvedic Technician, Ayurvedische Massagetherapeut, Ayurveda Yoga, Teacher en Therapist. IJsra, uw kans om Ayurveda te leren en de mensheid van dienst te zijn. Agribiderij regelt uw uitvaarten volgens uw geloof. Zij begeleidt ook de nabestaanden bij de rituelen. Door 16 jaar kennis en ervaring is Agribiderij in staat u een volledige dienstenpakket te leveren. Het maakt niet uit waar u verzekerd bent. Agribiderij kan de uitvaart voor u regelen. Ook als u niet verzekerd bent, kan Acribidij uw uitvaart regelen. Acribidij is vanaf 2014 een keurmerkondernemer geworden. Voor meer informatie kunt u terecht op onze website.